okay i will uh, because I'll, for you a, a lot of this comes very naturally to you because probably from people from our generation we have especially those people who have been on the internet throughout their life because uh, for you if you were part of discussion forums and th- those were very in things in early 2000s or late 90s uh, that's where we got all our uh, information from you're making me the- feel old yeah yes and the blogs were the best place to get so i remember visiting middle stage and knowing everything about literature because chandra has used to write that blog amit verma used to write another the same blog then he shifted to his uncut and those were like uh, the 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 islands of you just wanted to go there and get maroon and get out of it and feel very good about it uh newsletter uh, even then uh, did not happen the way it is happening now and because for us it's like a easy transition we have it's like a blogging in a different form because yeah. uh, giving links uh, uh, and you remember like backlinks used to be so big if you would uh, and then you would give a shout out to other bloggers and you would have a list of people who you should read and so on and so forth but a lot of people like if you remember a lot of people who uh, who were likely 10 years younger than me uh, for the first time when they came to the net they only had google sheets to work on they only had uh, Uh, google presentations or email they haven't ever accessed native clients now the same thing is happening with the newsletter so uh, we may also have to like i would ask you questions because these guys who who start a substack or who are going to start scroll stack for them it's not newsletter actually it's just like oh there is an audience uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, influencers out there there's a lot of audience which i can influence with my writing and i just need to write um so the question number 1 which which uh, and this is coming from a perspective of a very common layman person who wants to start who is interesting who is interested in the newsletter and then he wants to think oh what is the first thing which i should do uh, how should i scout uh, because you had you were uh, uh, reading politico and then these guys shifted to axios and then they, so someone like you is always aware what you want to write and it's just a matter of like sitting quietly for 20 minutes and you exactly know what you have to do now imagine if someone who wants to go to scroll stock scroll stack or any other and wants to think of a topic an audience uh, what is the first step which you would suggest in terms of picking the audience and then thinking of a newsletter what is the what is your what was your thinking process when you were doing political fix or daily fix or you uh, subcontinental breakfast for that matter right um yeah so uh, uh, as to what you're saying earlier it it yeah for those who didn't grow up with the blogging world it it really uh, i didn't uh, expand on this enough but to me the real space of of both podcasting to some extent although podcasts are, are harder to build and harder to grow in a certain way but newsletters as well are a return to that form where it's a little more intimate you're speaking a little more directly to your reader than you are on by writing posts that go up on facebook or on on a site um or twitter which which while a lot of people that we know on blogging basically move to twitter it then became this really wild public space where you're not having engaging interesting conversations necessarily um but for those who are not familiar with that space who, who like you said came to the internet without seeing these these wonderful little bubbles of interesting information where we built community and we spoke back to each other that that really felt intimate i think that that is the word that i i would suggest um yeah it can it can be hard to look at the internet now and say i, I can build a newsletter that that people will want to pay attention to um i think to the way it worked for me of course is a little different than it might be for someone who's not necessarily in the new space um but i think the the ingredients are the same do you think there is a, a tremendous need or interest in the thing that you would like to see for me it was like if if the political fix already existed somebody else was already doing it and in a way that was useful i would not have built it maybe i would have liked to write that sort of thing anyways but part of the reason for wanting to build it was because i didn't see it out there in the space and and i i was interested in that sort of thing and then of course this might be a bit hubristic or it might be narcissistic but i was like 
there are probably other people out there like me who also are interested in the same sort of thing. So, so the first question is, would I read this, right? Is there, is there a compelling reason for me to put this product out? And you know, the medium you can find based on that, it, I could have decided to, to turn it into a podcast. I could have turned it into a website itself or various other things. As I said, we tried the daily fix as an article rather than a newsletter. So you find your medium, but specifically with, with newsletters, is, it, would, is this something you would read? And can you think of a small community? It doesn't have to be large that would be interested. And then the third, I think I would always say for that person who's thinking um, about starting a newsletter, she should think about what the objective is. Um, is it that, you know, you just want to, you, you want a space for your writing? I absolutely think the, the newsletter space is uh, sufficiently interesting right now and not so, you know, jump the shark, like I said, that, that you wouldn't be able to find a small community um, it's almost operating like early to mid blogging space at the moment, though it's, you know, jokes are already starting to surface that everyone has a newsletter now. Yes. Um, but I think, I think it's still possible that if you think that you would read it and that if you would read it, there's a small other community and, and you're clear on what you want out of it, that either you want, it's just a space for your writing or you actually want to promote something about your career, your products, if, if it's something to do with your business or, you know, journalism. Um, if you're clear in what it is that you expect out of it, I, I would put a few of these things as the first questions that you should answer before uh, attempting to get into the space. Great. Uh, so when you started Political Fix, and you, you also have the luxury of knowing your audience uh, a little better than others because uh, someone who is just starting out, I, I, I started with, because when I started this, Earlier, I would send newsletters for the brands because I ran a marketing, digital marketing agency. But when I started mine, the first 10 people were my friends and first 50 people were the friends of friends whom I had asked, uh, knowing that they, they can. And it was a street knife fight kind of a thing. Hey, do you want to read my newsletter? I'll send you the link or I'll include you in the list. That was what I, you, I did. But coming because you were also at the same time, uh, it, was, it may also be difficult for you because you are accessing a huge number of audience. So though it seems easy, oh, easy that, hey, Rohan already has an audience. So his newsletter will already become one of the most read newsletters. But I'm sure that you would have diced the information, looked at the audience. How did you do it? Were there, were there surveys or you get some kind of data dump to look at the kind of subscribers or readers you have? Uh, did scroll stacks tech help you? in any sort of way. So that would be interesting to know. You don't have to like divulge exact numbers or something, but how did you get to know the hang, of, how did you get the hang of the audience which you were want, wanting to reach out to other than the assumption you had? Yeah, uh, 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 good question. Um, no, scroll stack uh, was being, uh, and is developed completely separately to, to scroll uh, itself. And so um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wasn't working with that at all. Uh, to me, like for example, uh, one of it, one thing that I decided was that I would take a big subject that is popular for a certain amount of time. So the elections last year as a test balloon, right? This is something that people are going to pay attention to and there's an opportunity to grab people's attention. So so otherwise your your difficulty often is like you said, you either have to force people to, 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 to read something, you have to really push hard to get them initially and then maybe that ball will start rolling. But I thought, instead of taking fully that chance, why not take something big and do a pop-up newsletter essentially. Three months, I know I'm doing this, but if it's unsustainable and my assumptions are not panning out, then you know we abandon it or we, we change form accordingly. So, so one of it was, was the idea that it's, it's attached to something specific that gives people a reason to even check it out in the first place. Um, I, de I had a Google form out there pretty early, initially just sent it to friends saying like, what it is that you would like to do uh, or to see uh, in terms of election coverage, what do you want us to do at Scroll? And uh, initially it was not even newsletter specific. It was like, what kind of reporting as well? What, what kinds of things are you missing from your media diet? Um, and, and this was to friends initially. Then I put it on Twitter and asked other people to spread it around, sent it to a bunch of students I know because I do some recruiting for Scroll and said, okay, what are you guys, you know, journalism students, like you find few places based on that idea of like, who's going to read this, 
I know an audience. I don't. I, I'm saying I got the new the survey out to 200 people. Not a, not a huge number of people, but yes. even that is is uh, as you see people starting to say the same sorts of things, you yes. get a sense of what they want. Um, at the same time, what I found very interesting is that of course people might say something, and then what they actually do with the newsletter is very different. So. I was I had a very link heavy newsletter early on and I moved more and more to full consumption inside the inbox without having to click through the link. Even if I had a link in early on, I would say, oh, read this great piece written by so and so writer from this place. And I wouldn't say anything more about it. Towards the end of my process, I started to realize people want that sense of completion within the inbox. And so anytime I include a link now, I try and describe what's within it. So you might still want to click through, but if you've only read the newsletter and haven't clicked through, um, you, you still have a sense of what's going on. Um, and that's something I got to know from actually paying attention to how people read because in surveys, they would say, we want lots of links, we love them. But actually the, the way people were responding to. Um, and then, but, but when, I, when I moved to a very analysis heavy thing, people were saying we're missing the links. So what ultimately happened now with political fixes, that's why I do a Monday one, which is analysis and a Friday one, leading into the weekend where people can collect a few more interesting links and click through to them over the weekend. Um, but yeah, so the process is very, is, is, is a lot of trial and error. Ultimately, it's taking some assumptions, maybe giving yourself a high percentage shot, right? Like if I had not started around the, the elections, I would have had a harder time. But elections are a great time or, or take any big event in that sense or something that you think will work and say, even just the start of the year saying like, I'm going to start something new. Like uh, it might be a way to get people to pay attention and more likely to get that little click, even in answering a survey that could lead you to, to better informed decisions about how to make something. I think uh, I, I also actually emailing people and asking them, I, I don't do too much. And I don't know if I, other people might tell me what they think. I don't, I don't tend to email people when they unsubscribe because sometimes I find that a bit uh, either creepy or a little, you know, and, and my newsletters, I think for super intimate newsletters, it makes sense doing that. But uh, people who do subscribe and send in letters or responses, I, I say thank you for kind words, but then I always ask them, what else do you think we could do? What do you, what, what is it that you like about the newsletter, et cetera? So having that direct line of communication is what reminds me of blogging. And also that is, is crucial to, to keeping that sense of like, this is an, always an experiment. We're always playing around with what we're doing and seeing whether people like it or not. You're, you're absolutely right. It's, we had a huge audience on scroll. My audience on the newsletter is actually tiny compared to the scroll audience. And yet, in some ways, I, I like it uh, uh, in a very different way because scroll does not speak from the first person. My newsletter is from the first person. It is a more direct connection to me rather than to the news organization in a way. And, uh, and, and that, again, it reminds me of those, those great days when you're building community in, in a relatively smaller space. Yeah. Uh, so, I have, I mean, Financial Times has great uh, legacy of like sending newsletters like rec and all and people read that and they have a huge following and very particular voice so when you when you started this and when you uh, did the so one of the funny things which i remember about doing these pilots someone wrote on the twitter that pilots never fail but they never scale right. uh, so uh, so i my question is coming from that point of view your, your pilot worked it was around elections it worked for you uh, so two things. One, how did it, uh, is, are there any numbers which you can share? Is it in thousands and lakhs of subscribers which you reach out to? And how did the growth, how did it happen over a period of time? Was there a lull period? And then there were spurts of growth because elections, but then the current government has never given you a chance not to be interested in politics ever. So has it been a exponential growth? And we expect another four years of exponential growth and then something like that. But ideas and do you categorize your audience like do you have some personas in your mind uh, that oh it's one audience is like this one audience group is like this and the other one is like this uh, right uh, so a bunch of things there um, uh, I, I would say yeah that's that's an, an interesting point about uh, pilots uh, and scaling um, of course, maybe my experience is not comparable to many others because I have this huge advantage of a giant funnel at scroll. So um, uh, for, for about six months, 
uh, we, we didn't advertise the newsletter on scroll.in at all. It was basically just pushing it out on, on Twitter and, and the articles that were going up. Um, and, you know, I was in the thousand space uh, at that point. And, and we're still in the, in the large thousands, honestly, on the newsletter with, the, you know, something like 35 to 40% of people opening every week. Um, which is pretty high for a for a news space where about seventeen is seventeen percent of an open rate is average. Um, part of it is the question of a match between how big you want to be and and how big you can be, right? Um, I might want to be. Uh, to me, this is a a, a twenty thirty thousand newsletter, maybe a fifty thousand at most, if I spend a lot of money really to acquire an audience, um, because it's it's a bit geeky, it's a bit policy heavy. There's there's a bit of insidery stuff, which is something that I wanted to do. Um, and for me, it was easier to make that decision to not have it be a 100,000, a 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakh newsletter, which of course is not something that has happened in India yet, let's say, but also not even aim to do that because we already have scroll and an article is always going to get read much more than um, a newsletter. So the aim for me was to have this be a more dedicated community that paid attention to what we were doing instead of trying to surf in a SEO wave or anything like that. Um, and, and to eventually, if possible, monetize it or use that community to, to get them to subscribe to scroll or things like that. So for, for me, the objective was also pretty clear that I, I'm not trying to get to a massive audience because we have the massive audience. I'm trying to build a more dedicated community that is that finds value in my voice. Um, growth is pretty steady in part because we now advertise on, on scroll. So really it is about the funnel because if you're not able to get people to even figure out what this is, um, you know, it is going to be hard for you to spread. You'll, you'll spread in the twos and the threes and the tens and twenties initially. And that goes up to the hundreds to hundreds. Um, when you're able to either advertise a little bit or find some form of circulation. One, one big thing I suggest to everyone is what we used to do back in the day with blog rolls, which is basically if there are fellow folks who are doing uh, interesting things, you do crossovers, right? You, you cross post for them and you post uh, on your own or you, you guest post, things like that. But you're basically giving their audience a chance to reach you and your audience a chance to reach them, that sort of thing. Um, for the political fix, constant iteration in looking at this. Um, uh, scroll, quite honestly, didn't have a clear newsletter. Um, uh, aim because we're a really small news organization, and again, the first the first idea is always the site building that and making sure it's it's sustainable. Um, to me, this was more of a pet project that I wanted to see and and pull off entirely and pilot myself. Um, I do think we could ac acquire a lot more users um, if if you know people do that through you know paid acquisitions. People do that through morning brew style referral programs, giving people. Um, incentives to sign up and things. To me, it's mostly been organic plus uh, recirculation on scroll.in. I would expect it to continue growing. We do see bumps. Um, at, at December, very few people were reading. Um, lots of people on holiday, etc. cetera. Um, and so it made me start to think of actually, let me take that into, into mind and give January, let, let a bunch of early issues in January be recaps of what happened in December, look forward to the year, ways of getting people interested in it again. And then again, you start seeing that that graph climbed quite a bit. Um, you're right, this government, we, we've, you know, since the election fix, we've had uh, what happened in Kashmir. We have had uh, this NRCCA <laughs> protest. We've had riots in Delhi, and then we've had uh, uh, COVID and the lockdown and the migrant crisis. So, so in terms of interest, I have been, I don't know, I, I, lucky is not the right word for all of these awful things, but um, uh, you know, there, there hasn't been no lack of interest. And so that growth is also steady. I have, I have focused a little more on, on who I want to pay attention to um, because I, I don't want to do lay political commentary or a big part of, for me, the political fix is indexing politics and policy. So a lot of what I'm trying to do is take something that is very political or newsy and give people a sense of the underlying depth in terms of policy by pulling in research, pulling in academics, talking about what, what is underlying that, that subject. And so I know it's going to be geeky and not go over a certain point, but that might be a super valuable audience, you know, a bunch of academics or people in think tanks or in, in, uh, in government basically paying attention to this. To me, that's almost a more valuable audience than having one lakh people who occasionally click this open to see what's going on. They, you know, the, like I said, the Times of India has uh, six or seven people on a daily newsletter that does a great job. 
Um, and I'm never going to be able to compete with that. So I also find my niche and, and try and stick and develop that community really well. Great. Uh, so when you decided that this is my objective and this is the audience I want to get to and I'll have a steady growth, um, are there a couple of examples of a particular newsletter which really stood out for you or was that the, uh, the moment you, that something clicked in your head and said, oh, wow, this is what I want to continue more or particular topic which you said, oh, I just discovered this because I came across this feedback. So a couple of examples which were like the aha moment for you right. because writing a newsletter is a very dreary thing. You keep doing it like week after week or twice a week. At times it's just not as enjoyable as people think it is. But then there are those like those moments of a very silent achievements which you count for yourself. Oh, I got this. Now I should do this. A couple of examples which really stood out for you. So I'll take you back a little bit on this. Um... Uh, early on with both the election fix and the political fix, I had a colleague, uh, uh, Anitya, who made these amazing illustrations. Uh, I, I can't show you the, uh, my, my favorite one is Modi uh, as, a, as a Superman and, you know, of bullets <laughs> of like criticism of him bouncing off. But I bring this up to point out that one of the things was that was entirely extraneous to me, but might be important for people paying attention is that the imagery right, really matters either picking great photos, finding ways to get people, like no matter how good your writing is, you know, if, if it's the first time you're getting people to pay attention, like of course you can go back to the political newsletter and like it's completely dry, it's gray, it's meant to be read on the phone and super easy and sure that works for political because that's what they are. But I would say for anyone who's looking to venture into the space, your, your newsletter has to look good. I had the the, the privilege of having a great illustrator a colleague who was able to to make these fun fun illustrations and things like that but um, uh, even now uh, she no longer works with us and I, I just spend a little bit of time on on uh, on a free photoshop alternative honestly to to um, churn out not really illustrations but produced photographs that go with the political fix that try and tell a story a little bit and and I could say aside from you know aha moments or things I know people have responded to me saying that they they saw it or they paid attention because of the photo or the illustration so it's it's invaluable making sure that you find a way for people to hook into your your product and this is I mean as uh, after six years of helping helm a, a digital outfit I mean I can tell you this is standard for for digital products in general right my very macabre um, illustration of this is that it's a, it's a, it's a, you're a lifeguard and there's a sea of like people out there who are all drowning. So which one are you going to pick? And the one who's able to get your attention first is that, right? Like that's what you're trying to do on, on Facebook or Twitter, if that's where you're sharing or on Google news. And so having a good headline and a really nice image matters ultimately, at least early on, uh, as you're trying to get people to pay attention. Um, I, I find uh, what I found early on, I, I, I interviewed a couple of people not knowing whether folks would, would pay attention. Um, and uh, immediately, I mean, part of the thing, like I said, is that scroll, uh, the political fix is, is coming from my voice. It's, it's, it has first person in it, although I, we don't like to use the I much in scrolls copy or even in the political fix, but you know it's coming from me. It's a little more conversational and chatty. And I got more comfortable with that over the course of the, the newsletter compared to my sort of reporter's or editor's voice. And you can do that easiest when you're talking to, to someone. And so we interviewed someone. In fact, I did my first interview right uh, in, in August uh, of uh, Constantino Xavier, who's a think tank uh, scholar. Um, after the audience uh, wrote in, somebody wrote in saying, this is someone I think you should be uh, talking to. And like, I, I, I really enjoyed that sort of thing. So when I just had my first couple of Q and A's, which were based off, you know, books that were coming out, I started asking people what, who they would like to hear from. And I started getting a lot of response. And, and it, it really surprised me early on when I asked for responses on like, what do you think about this subject? Or what do you make of this thing that's happening in the world? Very few people were actually responding. But when I asked maybe a more simpler thing, like who else would you like to hear from? I got a lot of responses. And I think again, uh, centering people at the core of your stories or what you're talking about, like fellow, like whether it's colleagues, you're the subjects of what you're writing about, you know, always making sure the stories about humans that tends to work a lot. Um, 
Um, I would have to think about, um, like I said, uh, for better or worse, it's been an extremely newsy year. And so each one of those things has given us a pretty good bump. Um, a part of it is also that the Indian media space is shrinking to some extent and people able to say certain things like we're able to write, I think, intelligently about the protests that happened last year or about the riots. And that really gave us a lot of, of, of interest. But in between, in, in January, like I said, when I saw this dip in December, I decided, okay, let me talk to the rest of my team and get each person in my team to send in a prediction for what they think uh, not 2020, but the decade of 2020 going forward will be for, for journalism, uh, for, for the, the new space and politics in India. And just getting these voices, actually, a lot of people loved that piece, which was not my voice at all. So take what you, you know, your mileage may vary on, on that, that they really enjoyed other voices there. But I got uh, a lot of great feedback from, from having a bunch of different people. And so you don't need your own team to do this, right? You can ask friends and things like that and yes. get, get other voices into your space but you know mixing up formats i find works really well of course one is testing out formats to see which ones people like week on week but then also mixing up occasionally having a listicle occasionally pulling an outside voice occasionally doing a more graphical thing um i think uh, is really what keeps people paying attention um and, and those are the ones uh, that i found have got the best response so now do you have a style guide a vagish style guide of sorts in your head uh, do you have a lens like I was uh, I was listening to uh, Rafat, who is founder of Skift, a travel uh, platform. And uh, he, in fact, built his first entire company on a blogging platform. And so he suggests and a couple of other people also suggest that, oh, like people from DigiDay, they suggest, oh, I have a lens. So Rafat's lens is marketing strategy and technology. So anything which is happening in the field of travel. Um, he will filter it through these three lenses for the larger audience. Do you have, and obviously there are style guides. Like I, 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 when I think of a newsletter, I'm constantly thinking of like very basic thing that one part of it should inform one part of it should educate one part of it should connect my readers with other readers. Like they should identify and the last is help them grow their businesses because I'm writing a business newsletter. Mm -hmm. And my lens is largely industry, uh, businesses, industry, and economy. Any issue anywhere in the world impacting these three small businesses in these three realms, I have to write about it. So do you also have a, a vagish, it does not have to be like very formal. I mean, like economist has a very formal style guide. These, this is how you will use. These are the headings which you will use. Bloomberg has a lead. This is how you have to like write the first paragraph. Do you have some rules, uh, rule book, or have you come up with something? Uh, or do you just naturally just write something? So, so scroll has a style guide um, for the oh. website. And so a lot of the stuff like, uh, and, and some of it is, is key in what I said early on, which is that we try to assume that nobody has previous knowledge, right? I can't just introduce even something as common as CBI or AIA DMK. We used to fight with our editor all the time, having to actually say all India, Anna, Dravida, Munitra, Karagam for every, like it's a lot of space. But the idea is to not assume that your, your reader knows what you're talking about. So even if you put that whole thing, you also put a comma and say, you know, one of the big uh, political parties in Tamil Nadu, in the south of India, etc. Some of my readership is quite international. I have a lot of academics who, who use um, my newsletter to pay attention to me in the States. And so I keep that dictum of always making sure that it's accessible. So while the full scroll style guide doesn't always apply to the political fix, because I, I speak more with an, an authorial voice rather than a, a brand voice, um, the simple suggestion that was given to me back in journalism school in America, and, and I find this, this is the way I write, which is, uh, is, is it an interesting story? Uh, imagine telling your mom this at the breakfast table. Now, the reason why the breakfast table is that there's lots of other things competing for your interest in the morning. And so this has to be interesting enough. But why your mom? Because you're not going to throw in swear words. You're not going to be profane. You're going to keep it interesting enough. You're not going to assume she knows the, the youth you know, lingo. And you know, it makes me sound old to say the word youth lingo. But um, <laughs> the idea is that for me, writing is best, unless you have a very specific style and a writerly style, is best when it sounds like you're telling someone an interesting story. So in the back of my head, my style guide is like, if I said this out loud, 
um, and somebody who's sitting in front of me, is it going to be interesting? Have, have I keep them hooked? Of course, some things you change to make sure it's interesting on the page. Um, but uh, that's that's the base style, right? Uh, in terms of formatting, like I said, I've, I've kept uh, trying to alter that. Um, uh, I learned to not put in links that are, like in the early days of blogging, you would have this thing where you'd, you'd it would almost be like a Simpsons episode where you'd put in a link that's really a joke, but you have to click it to get that joke. And yes. over time, I was like, you, I can't do that because people are not clicking. Um, and so it's almost, you know, wasted space, although we have unlimited space. But, um, so you, I learned to keep everything within the inbox and then keep a very specific space, which is my linking out space where I tell people like, if, if you enjoy the links, you come to that section, but everything else you should be able to read within uh, the inbox. Um, in terms of a lens, uh, the political fix is, is quite clear. We keep you informed. So anything, it's not meant to be comprehensive. You're not going to be on top of everything that's happening in India from week to week. Um, for that, you do daily newsletters, right? Like you, you go to something like the Times Top 10 or, or um, uh, there's a couple of new ones. I'm forgetting the names now. Lakshmi Chaudhary has just started a new one that's pretty good. There's uh, Splainer. Uh, Explainer. Explainer, that's right, yeah. yeah. Um, and and the, 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 there's a few other ones that do that really well. Yes. Um, or you could just, uh, or you could read scroll.in, right? This, the website uh, is pretty comprehensive, but what I'm trying to do here is to give you analysis of what we think is the most interesting or important topic. I'm not always picking like for, for, for about three months, the most interesting thing was COVID. So you, you, I wasn't doing COVID every week, um, but maybe finding an interesting aspect and some of this, because scroll is so small, some of this is not just the DNA of the political fix, it's also the DNA of, of, of scroll routine, which is that I'm, I'm interested in federal subjects, I'm interested in things that um, question the relationship between the citizen and the government, I'm interested in how politics interacts with policy. So not, not I don't find useful the, the regular chatter on evening back and forth between a spokesperson of this side and that side, but more importantly, okay, the migrant crisis is huge. What, what data can I pull out to give you a deeper understanding? So for me, the lens is partly I have to inform you, like I can't, I can't pick the random thing that is interesting me this week. It has to, to some extent, be the thing that's topical or interesting and, and it has to be accessible. So even if I'm writing about the complex issue of GST compensation, which I think is fascinating, you probably don't, you know, I have to make sure it's accessible. I find a frame, an analogy, something interesting that, that introduces you to that subject. Um, and and the, the final thing is I try and get, get some depth. So to me, like Perfect. find the, find use, basically use news as a way to get your attention and then divert that. Like it's almost a sleight of hand, divert you to reading about more boring, geeky, but more important, you know, policy stuff. Great. And I mean, just like just final three questions, you can take as much time as you want or Perfect. as less as. Uh, in fact, there are like four things. One, um, we want to know a bit about the tech part of what you uh, use. Uh, do you use off the shelf uh, uh, tech solution or how did you start or you had your team building it for you? Like how do you access those analytics? Where do you get those numbers from? Is there a, so you don't have to disclose exact, but some part of it. Um, then how, is there a plan in your, in, plan that you access social media in a particular way to spread the growth uh, or increase the growth of your audience. Um, and, 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 and then uh, we also want to know one book, which you want to, which won't, I mean, this is a very difficult thing for a journalist to say, or just read this one book and this will help you. But think of like someone who is starting out and wants to like brush up on writing or brush up on understanding something uh, like one book, I will not name that book now. Maybe if I name that, maybe you want to say about the same book. And lastly, when I started reading, when I started following you on uh, on Twitter in the early days, earlier days when probably you came to India, whenever you used to tweet a lot about music, I remember uh, happening in Delhi, uh, classical music. If I'm wrong, if I'm not right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there was Delhi events and there was Rohan's uh, Twitter feed, <laughs> which would tell hey, this classical music performance is taking place there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that last bit, uh, do you also like put that bit of uh, personality into a newsletter or not once in a while? So these okay. are like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go back to the resources one here, uh, only because I would say for those who I, I like are super interested in this stuff, all of these places, um, I'll flag Dan Oshinsky, for example, here. 
uh, uh, Dan uh, ran the newsletters for the New Yorker for a little while. He's working somewhere else at the moment. I can't remember where, but uh, he runs a, a monthly Google document with a bunch of resources and interesting things about newsletters. And he will respond to your email extremely promptly, no matter how big like his work is. He does actually consultancy for newsletters as well. So like he, wow. he, I think it's his, uh, it's his business as well, but he's extremely prompt in replying to things and he's got great collections of newsletters. And it's called not a newsletter because he puts it out on a Google doc. It's about newsletters, but it's a collaborative Google doc that comes every month. And I would highly recommend that for all questions about tech, about uh, analytics, about uh, funnels and how to convert and so on. Um, for specific to scroll, honestly, because our core thinking at the end of the day is on the site, um, we're, we're focusing on that and, and really the newsletter is something that, you know, um, uh, scroll stack was being built and it's built outside. It's not part of scroll in that sense and it's being built outside and it has lots of fascinating things that, that would be relevant here, but Ritesh will talk about those next week. Uh, but right. for me, we started off on MailChimp um, using simple analytics. I, of course, have the Google Analytics uh, of, of scroll.in and I know where my readership is and I can, you know, look over that, that cross section a little bit. We also have subscribers on and contributors on scroll.in and many of those are newsletter readers. Um, uh, the Political Fix is not our uh, only newsletter. For a while, we ran a newsletter for our magazine section, for also for our sports section. And we had a very popular one called Books and Ideas run by Arunava Sinha, who is a, a popular, like the best Bengali translator. And, and really, a, a, uh, it's, it's incredible to me how much work he gets done because he works at Scroll and also teaches at Ashoka and also translates books. So, um, so we had a bunch of these things and we had, um, uh, uh, we were basically using MailChimp when Substack uh, showed up uh, sort of independently. I was interested in it simply for people who are paying attention or interested in this. Substack is free, right? Until you're trying to monetize it relative to MailChimp, we're beyond a certain point uh, an audience you need to pay for. Uh, Substack at the moment, and who knows if this is scalable, whether they'll keep this forever, but Substack, if you're not charging people for it, is completely free no matter how big your list is. Um, which uh, which is is a useful thing. Uh, I honestly don't know what the specifics are for scroll stacks. So you'll have to uh, ask Ritesh about that. Yes, um, yes, yes. Uh, but uh, uh, but yeah. So that that's the simple tech reason. I pay attention to the simplest analytics. I'm not very complex on this front. I look at the open rate, which I think is important. To be fair, Mailchimp had better ones than than Substack did. Mailchimp would give me a sense of pe whether people are repeat openers, where they're coming from and so on. Substack is much more simple in just telling me how many people are opening week to week. And I would have to look more specifically to see if it's the same people opening week to week. Um, so it's not as complex in its analytics, but I think it does the job for anyone who's starting out. Um, and beyond that, I, I honestly rely a lot more on direct feedback. Um, and I keep, a, I try and keep, it's not on every newsletter and I haven't done it well for the last two, few months. Um, but usually I try to keep a Google form open with three or four questions in an open space in the newsletter at all times so that anyone who wants to give me feedback at any given moment is able to click through and just tell me what they think. And it has genuinely informed how I have changed formats, tried different things on the site. I think that covers like all of these things here. I have yes. read through all of them. And, I, and they really uh, are full of great stuff. I mean, understanding a funnel, trying to figure out how to keep loyalty. Um, it, it, for anyone who's interested in the news game, um, one of the big struggles for journalism organizations over the last decade has been to get readers to pay directly for news. And, and yes. what has become conventional wisdom now is that simply the best way of getting people to you know, subscribe by paying money to a news organization is if they're accessing you through email, because email is uh, a little more intimate, it's a little more relevant to you than maybe going finding someone on Facebook, Twitter, or going directly to the site. So uh, lists have become extremely important for news organizations as ways of or just databases for which to convert subscribers. And so newsletters are crucial that way and growing them is extremely important. Um, as regards the book, can you, uh, the, you, was the question a book that you think is specific for writing specific to newsletters? I don't think I have something. Not for the newsletter. Yeah. That. For writing. Yeah. For any book, which you, which comes for the audience, like you're talking about, or who wants to do newsletters and have some idea because it will include a bit of writing, a bit of planning, a bit of understanding how this basically it's journalism in it.
different form and people like me like i am not a journalist so when i picked up uh, william zinsers uh, on writing style that helped me a lot because uh, he kind of took up so i was always very conscious about my grammar that i am always hmm. wrong my pronunciation is not right but then he said no that's not you have to worry about less you don't have to worry about everything just focus on these four things so that kind of helped me um yeah sure uh, so i'll i'll just take you back to these suggestions which are the newsletters okay. that i i really love uh, uh, strategy i think there's a really good job of it and money stuff just to get a sense of and vox uh, sentences is a great newsletter that is um that's link based basically it's it's explaining right. the news the the book i'll pull out i haven't read this in a long time but i remember it being extremely influential for me which is stephen king's on writing Okay. Um, Stephen King is the horror writer, right? He's not someone yes. you think of as being classically, uh, you know, a high art in in that sense. And I believe he wrote uh, this book, which is part memoir, part guide to writing. Um, after he, soon after he had his famous accident in in Maine, where he it was a life threatening accident. Yeah. Um, I read it. I read it a long time ago, maybe a decade ago, but it stuck with me because it yeah. was both extremely interesting as a memoir. but also really a good guide it made you want to start writing immediately after you're done with it he 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 doesn't uh, he doesn't mystify the process he doesn't um, make it seem like this magical thing that just emerges from your brain he he talks about it as more like methodical you you have to get to it every day these are some clever ways of putting your words onto paper and cleaning them up afterwards um it's not uh, necessarily a uh, good for digital or good for newsletters or good for but it's good writing tips and a very readable book so stephen king's on writing i would suggest that perhaps is only a book they haven't made a movie about uh yes. pretty much i mean <laughs> uh, i'm sure they'll documentize it at some point or <laughs> yeah yeah um, so was the, there something at the very end yeah. yes yeah yes. one question and um, i mean you were pretty much i asked that you had already covered that in the answers okay i mean a bit about music why not a newsletter ah, yes. Yes. A, 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 why not a newsletter a substack or a, sorry scroll stack because that will be sacrilege when i say substack to you guys uh, why not a music newsletter for you, uh, from you someone like who can like i would really i mean i i started reading but then i i been listening to classical music and delhi events is a very messy place to go and find out what's happening sadly right? it's it's really a uh, um i have a random book suggestion there for for you if you're interested it's called ragan josh um uh, by shila dhar this beautiful book about music in delhi um in which uh, uh, i believe bade ghulam ali khan refuses to go to the air studio because he's afraid if he sings to a recording studio it'll take his voice out and he'll never get it back um, it's yeah. a beautiful book um uh my answer is if you could kindly ask the news cycle to quieten down a bit i would be happy to do <laughs> that sort of thing uh, but yes. it's been a bit relentless since the elections we have not had you know a little moment of of uh, quiet on that front i would you know there was a time in my life that i thought i would be a pop culture writer not uh, not someone into hard politics or, or news and i i really enjoy even uh, maybe bridging that space between um you know what is popular on twitter but also finding classical getting people interested in in those kinds of things so it 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 fascinates me but honestly it's it's purely a function of time at the moment i mean also over the last year uh i i saw the first episode of this thing called bandish bandits on amazon um which is about classical music and in the first episode was really bad in my opinion but yes, i still yes. i still sat through the concert at the end of it and i was just like it's been so long since i've heard live music and it's it's uh, it's something i really miss but yeah there's not there's not been much time honest that's the only way but i i like twitter and instagram which which i have as private um as these spaces where i can be online uh without always having to be on on top of the news although i don't do it as much out like from my side on twitter i i i have a lot of people that i follow who are into random things like like birding and dinosaurs and music that that are interesting to me but not necessarily part of my my work or my day to day the other side of it is that when your day job i guess is writing and and thinking of these things it's hard to have a side gig that's also writing um i i much prefer now like so I, while i would love love to do something on the side about music or something else um i think i would Uh, attempt to take the tabla up again at some point or something to that effect rather than another thing that involves writing um, oh, yes. so yeah, oh, yes. yeah or maybe or maybe i don't know i mean um, like releasing a list or two about 
uh, I because I follow coffee very closely, and then there are roasters who release their music I and mean, their playlists once in a while, and then their take is totally different than what I usually listen to. And then I, I really feel that there should be there should be some like Music Room was a book which kind of told stories like Kulam Ali won't sing and unless he ate kebabs because yeah, yeah. That, that, he said that that's what my voice comes from and so on and so forth. I wish that part is also kind of uh, I mean. people like you and i who have other yeah. interests should also do something about yeah, it yeah. but just have a but, word with the powers that be to quieten down the news cycle and i'd be happy to great so i that that's pretty much sums up our today's uh, session and it was a great session i really love talking with you um there there are some great tips i will share in a summary and i will also share the summary with you and the audience um zainab i think we are done with the today's session thanks everyone yes. for joining Yes, and you might want to just uh, put a plug again for next week's session, which is again. Uh... Yes. Oh, I'm sorry about it. So next week we have uh, Ritesh, who is one of the founders of Scroll Stack, which people at times uh, un call Substack for India, but it has solved the solutions such as earning money by uh, using by writing and doing creative stuff. Uh, you can write pretty much anything and then ask money from your audience. Next week, we'll discuss the tech part of it in terms of how we can create content, how we can earn money. Um, that's next year. We'll put it out on social media and more details will go out as we do that. Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks Rohan. It was Thanks so much for having me.